Hello, this is Pete from Empower Mac. Welcome to the Empower Cast iWork series, Keynote for Beginners. This is episode four. In episode four, we're going to cover working with themes and master slides. And we'll go over some of the questions I get asked the most about how to edit or customize themes and master slides. So when we first launch Keynote, by default, we start with the theme chooser. There are a few important elements of the theme chooser interface I just want to touch on before we move on. Hovering your mouse cursor over any of the available themes will sort of flip through the different master slides that are available within that theme. And it'll also give you a glimpse of how that theme's color defaults are set up. All of those defaults are fully customizable. So if there's something you like about a theme, but you're afraid that the colors might not work for your project, don't worry about that because all colors in all themes are fully customizable. In the bottom center of the theme chooser window, there's a size slider, so you can make the thumbnails larger or smaller based on your preference. Just gonna make them a little bit larger. And then slide size. This was covered in great detail in a previous episode of the Keynote series. I'm gonna put that link in the description so you can just click on it if you wanna know more about slide size. Then you've got cancel and choose. So I'm just gonna choose a theme. And we're gonna start with black and then click choose. Okay, I've got the front page populated with my Empower Mac iWork series, Keynote for Beginners, episodes one through 12. I'm not a big fan of Gil Sands at all, so I'm gonna change the default font to something more appropriate for Empower Mac. So I can either select the text box, and that will allow me to change all the text inside a particular box, or I can go down into the box and select just part of it and change the font on just part. I can also select multiple text boxes by clicking and dragging a marquee, capturing both text boxes, and change the text in both at once. So if I go up to the upper left hand corner to the format bar, which is covered in great detail in a previous episode, I'll also put that link in the description. I'm just going to change that to a font called Myriad Set. So this is my cover slide for my presentation. The next slide I'm going to present will be a header with some bullets. So I'm going to go up to the upper left hand corner and click on that plus to create a new slide. Now when I create a new slide by default it's going to give me a header with some text bullets. To change the master or the template of the slide that you'd like to create go up into the masters pull down here. So you see here every theme has a set of masters to choose from. So this is title and subtitle, title and bullets, so on. Not every theme has the same set of masters. So as you're deciding on the theme that's right for you, be sure to take a look around and see which theme has the best set of masters to fit your project. So if I wanted my second slide to have a placeholder for a photo, I can just click here on this master. Now notice the text is default to Gil Sands, and we want to use that Myriad set font. So what I could do is just continue to change the text boxes every time I create a new slide by selecting them, go to the pull down, and clicking on the Myriad set font. Instead of having to repeat that step each time I create a new slide, I can access the actual master slides of this theme and change it on the master. That way every time I select this particular master, the font will be changed to the selection I made. So to access the masters, I'm gonna pull down the little hash mark in the upper left hand corner in the navigator and notice that'll reveal the master slides. So if I scroll through, you can see these are all the master slides that are available for this particular theme. Now this one was called Photo Vertical and you can see there's a little check mark by it indicating that the slide I have selected was indeed this master. So if I click on the master, I can select those text boxes, change the font, and then just close that access to the master slides back up. There. Now each time I create a new slide, and it's that particular master, the text will default to those changes I made in the master slide. Another very frequently asked question is, how do I get my logo, 
my company logo on each of the slides. In order to do that, you edit the master slides just like you would with the text. So for instance, if I want an Empower Mac logo to appear in the bottom left of each of my slides, I could repeat the process. So I'm going to open up my logo collection here and grab a white Empower Mac logo, copy that, and paste it over into my slide one here. Now I can drag that and drop it in the lower left hand corner. And then if I wanted the same thing for slide two, I can go over to slide two, paste it in again, drag it and drop it in the corner. Now in order to streamline that process, I can just paste that logo into a master slide. So every time I create that type of slide, my logo will already be on there. I'll pull down my little access panel so I can have a look at master slides and then click on photo vertical and I'm going to use the paste command again on my keyboard shortcuts to paste that logo drop it right down into the lower left corner now I'm not going to stop there I'm also going to make a blue stripe so under shapes I'm going to pull down and choose a square now notice that square is yellow because that's the default color for this particular theme. Grab that yellow square and set it over here by my Empower Mac logo. Pull that off to the right and change the fill for that square to gradient fill. Since I want the fill to go horizontally from right to left, I'm going to click on the little arrow here. There, now that those elements have been added to a master slide, I can close my access to the master slides and now you can see when I go back to my regular slides there they are I can't access them from here which is good because I don't have to worry about moving them around accidentally they're just part of the background of the slide there now my empower Mac logo and the blue stripe will be on each one of these masters that I create if I click the plus for a new one there it is keep in mind that that customization option can be done with the background text boxes, images. You can customize the theme any way you want and make it so those repetitive tasks are part of the master slides. Now if you remember earlier in this tutorial we chose the black theme from the theme chooser. We made a bunch of changes to the master slides of the black theme. If we were to save this document, close it, and open a new document in the black theme, our Empower Mac logo and Stripe and other changes we've made to fonts would not reflect in the black theme. Apple has it set up by default that you cannot alter permanently an existing theme, which is a good thing, kind of protecting me from myself because I know I could go in there and mess up some of the themes that Apple worked hard to include in the Keynote application. So what I'll do, because I'm going to want to use this particular theme over and over again, and in the future I can see myself doing projects and needing these particular repetitive theme elements, what I'll do is under the file menu, choose save theme. When I click there, I'm allowed to name this theme. So since we chose the black theme to begin with, I'm going to type black with Empower Mac and then click save. Now I'm going to close this particular keynote presentation. Now again, if we chose the black theme again, it would not reflect the Empower Mac logo. It would not reflect the font changes we made. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of the window where you can see a black with Empower Mac theme has been created. Now when I hover over I can see that the font has changed. Notice the slide size is also the HD slide size I had chosen and it even shows me a thumbnail of my blue stripe and Empower Mac logo. This is Pete from Empower Mac hoping to give you all the tools you need to permanently abandon any Microsoft products. Thank you for tuning in. Please rate my video Make sure you're subscribed so you get all the updates, and I thank you for tuning in.